Mount Vernon Mayor Richard Thomas on 1460 WVOX. Good evening, good evening. I'm Mount Vernon Mayor Richard Thomas. That's the sound of Stevie Wonder right there, going to higher ground. You're listening to Mount Vernon moving forward. We're here every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. on 1460 on your AM dial or worldwide on WVOX.com or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Mayor Richard Thomas. Today is a, is a day that it's a pre-recorded show, but you can call in or you can call our office to leave a message at 914-665-2362. And one of the things is the reason why we are pre-recording the show today is because Mount Vernon lost a legend. We lost Dave Ford. Dave Ford was the founder of the, you know, the Mount Vernon Democratic Party. He's the one that that really made Mount Vernon a political powerhouse, and um, he helped transition the community at some real turbulent times in the '60s into a community that cared, a community that created happy homes. And Dave Ford is one of the founders of the Mount Vernon Neighborhood Health Center, which touches hundreds of thousands of people every, you know, basically every day um, from trying to keep families healthy and have affordable access to health care. He and Carol Morris did that back in the late 60s. And, and their journey to create equity and equality in Mount Vernon and beyond is something that has had a lasting impact on the county and the region. And Dave Ford is... is is someone that we all will miss and he has had an indelible impact on my life when I was coming up and expressing interest in um, getting involved in public service. Dave Ford told me to do it. He told me to make sure you, you talk to everyone, you listen carefully and you learn from people and never be afraid to lead. I remember going to his office in 2007 and sitting down with him when he was the commissioner of water and he said, you know, you see all these pictures around the room. There are pictures of people that, that I like. There are people that I really don't like. And that one picture right there, that's a picture of me with my enemy. But guess what? I helped him. And in this business of public service, you have to always remember to serve. You have to be a servant leader. And Dave Ford was just that. He was someone that listened. He would always talk to you. He would, even if you disagreed, he would find a way to try and find common ground. And, and Dave Ford advised me um, to make sure that I write letters to my colleagues in the council and the controller and, and other branches of government, inviting them to sit down and talk and go through the issues. He always made clear that you have to focus on the basics and get, get the basic stuff done. And when it comes time to stand up for what you believe in, don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in. And Dave Ford has, has truly had um, an impact on me. And I know that um, there are those out there that would try and um, you know challenge that, but they know the truth, and the truth is Dave Ford recommended me to sit down with Reggie Lafayette when I was um, being considered to uh, work in the governor's office. Dave Ford was there and urged everyone from Assemblyman Gary Pretlow to then Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson and Legislator Williams to all take a hard look at helping uplift and raise me up as a representative and a voice of the next generation. I recall Dave Ford telling Ernie Davis, you need to work with Richard Thomas before I got into public service. And when I got into public service, you know, Dave Ford was there. And he always said as, you know, the, the, the spirit of the party, you, you have to grow the party. You have to grow the discussion. You have to embrace different ideas. You have to embrace new ideas and stop trying to shut it down. So I thank Dave Ford for always providing me guidance, wisdom, and counsel when I needed it. And, and, and the, the lessons that, that I learned from him, I will always take with me. And I will always do my best to, to work with anyone and everyone that wants to sit down and talk it through. Even if, you know, it appears to be mortal enemies. We have to work, we have to serve. I just know that the real enemy that's facing our communities is illegal guns, it's mental illness, it's joblessness, it's homelessness, it's potholes, it's street lights that are out that make the neighborhoods dark, it's zombie homes that are haunting our neighborhoods, killing home values, bringing down the neighborhood, making them less safe, it's weeds that are growing all over the place that we have to clean up. Mount Vernon has so much potential. There are so many things that we can solve and the problems, as far as I'm concerned, they are the solution. All we have to do is focus on working hard, working smart, working together. And Dave Ford, 
went through some real difficult times. I mean, if you go back and place yourself in 1960, you know, that's a time when racism was, was not just real, it was the law. And he was there as, as a part of a movement of young people that said enough is enough. And, and that's what he also reminded me of. He said, the movements that help move America forward, that move the needle, it was always started with young people that were dissatisfied of being told to wait. And, and progress is always earned. It's, it's not something that, that you're just going to be handed to you. You have to go out and earn it. It's not perfect, but you make good progress. And if you think of how far we've come from 1960 to today, you know, it, some things that were normal back then, such as having two separate water fountains, that's not normal today. And because of work like his and, and inspiring and rallying and locking arms with, with you know, leaders of his time, and, and that just goes to show you how far we have come. And it's too far now for us to turn back around. We have to keep looking forward and moving forward. And Dave Ford, you know, all your stories, all your words of encouragement, all the lessons will, will, will stay with me. And again, I know that um, Mount Vernon Democratic Party is, is, is not where it used to be, but understand that my heart is there and I'm gonna continue to try and lead a progressive agenda, one that speaks to fixing our parks making sure our education system is strong, making sure our healthcare system has a strong advocate. And, and in terms of healthcare, you know, I know that um, the Mount Vernon Neighborhood Health Center for years has been trying to own its building. That's something that I wanna see happen and get done. But again, there are so many things that we have to work on, so many things that we have to fix because for some reason over the past 25 years, the leadership of, of local Democrats have, in my opinion, and this is me just being fact-based, have, have lost sight of their purpose and they've lost sight of the real issues that are afflicting our community because if if you know the local democrats in my opinion did not do what they were supposed to do um i can assure you that um memorial field would be open it wouldn't even be an issue but yet it's been closed for 10 years and i ask myself why does it take so long for a group of people to fix a football field and that's what motivated me to run for mayor that's what motivated me to reach out to day four before i ran and say look i'm tired and he said, if you're tired and you want to change it, you have to step up and stand up for what you believe in. I support that. I support a different candidate, but just know that once you get in, you know, if, if you win, I'll support you the same way I support um, every mayor. And, and every mayor should have, um, you know, their, their, their right to hire their team and, and try and, and, you know, put their vision forward to be judged. And, and, and these are things that, that we tried to do and Dave Ford has always been there. Um, and I, I've always tried to fulfill his requests based on, you know, the vision that he set out to make sure we have access to health care, make sure that, you know, we use federal dollars appropriately. And there are so many things that that um, that I just wish that I could go back and talk with him about. But um, that's why we have to take time to always spend time and listen to each other, because you never know when it's your time to go. And, and Dave Ford is, is someone that we would really miss. And, and the wisdom and the stories and, and all the things that he has done is, is, is truly a, a, a real servant leader. And I can't thank him enough for doing what he did, but more importantly, giving me a shot to stand up and, and get involved in local government, but also show me where I can improve, tell me how it was done. And that institutional knowledge is, is very important. And, and as you can hear, you know, I, I listened and I took note about what he did back in the 60s and the 70s and how that process, you know, the situations that were faced back then are very similar to situations that we face now. And I apply those lessons of keeping my door open to what we're trying to do to fix our community, fix the broken system. But just know that we're gonna be back from break. We're gonna talk more about Dave Ford, but also what we're doing to move Mount Vernon forward. Don't change that dial. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. You're listening to Mount Vernon Moving Forward. I'm Mayor Richard Thomas of the great city of Mount Vernon, New York. We're here every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. You're listening to 1460 on your AM dial or worldwide at WVOX.com or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Mayor Richard Thomas. Today is a pre-recorded show because today we will be at uh, Dave Ford's Wake. Dave Ford is a local legend. He's a giant in um, political circles and around the region and around the country for what he did to build a political powerhouse in Mount Vernon. And before we went to break, I was talking about the things that, that he shared with me and, and helped push me forward and, and how he urged 
um, you know, numerous Democrats to work with, um, work with me and help the next generation find uh, its way to contribute to um, local government and how to help the next generation get ready to take the baton and the torch further. However, as many of you have been watching, um, my administration has been dealing with turbulence because, you know, some people just don't want to move forward. They want to stay trapped in time and, and run backwards. We, we understand that, um, again, that's their decision, but my decision is to stand up for what I believe, and I believe that Memorial Field should be fixed. I believe that our community should be safe. I believe that we can make, a, you know, an affordable community that is quality, but more importantly, a community that cares. I believe that we can have not just jobs, but great jobs. And by focusing on our economic development in a way that speaks to our core strengths, and, and we've been focused on that. And I can't thank my administration enough for enduring a lot of pushback from people that want to play politics with, with public safety in particular, but play politics and not even think about policy. So um, there, are, there are a couple of things that I want to touch upon before I bring up the next speaker. The next speaker that's going to join us or the guest that's going to um, join us by phone is Elvis Cordova. And before I you know, start talking to him, I want to tell you about Elvis in the context of Dave Ford. So Dave Ford told me, you know, when you run and you seek to change anything, you got to make sure that you have people that are intelligent, that are passionate, energetic, smart, and, and you know people that, that will share your vision. And, and you have to have a network of people that, that share your vision of, of progress and share your vision of uplifting people. And, and that's what brings me to Elvis because when I met Elvis when um, I was an undergrad, he was a grad, uh, both at NYU. Elvis was uh, graduating NYU Wagner and I was in NYU um, at the time I was in, um, doesn't matter, but I was, I was leaving Stern to go to CAS and ultimately I went back to Stern to um, get my executive MBA. But again, that's more details than we needed. The point is I met Elvis years ago and very lucky to meet him because Elvis went on from um, NYU Wagner to work for the United Nations. He went to, you know, complete studies at Harvard. He went on to become a presidential fellow and then ultimately became uh, an undersecretary to the Secretary of, of Agriculture, uh, one of five people to be appointed to that role by President Obama. And Elvis has since joined our administration to help us really make some ultimate corrections to mismanagement. And, and there are just a, a litany of things that we can go into, but this is where Dave Ford applies. You know, he said, identify sharp people that know what they're doing, that are passionate about service and are progressive. And Elvis is just that, and I thank him for sharing his time to join us to help move the city forward, to make some, you know, adjustments to, to you know, a lot of things that, that happened um, before I got here, but we're correcting ultimately. It's taken a lot of hard work, a lot of, a lot of time, but you know, when you have a situation where we are able to save millions in federal dollars because we're now doing the basic paperwork or, or we're making sure it's being utilized by the right organizations like Habitat for Humanity or Westchester Residential Opportunities or other nonprofits that have, you know, credibility. Um, these are things that, that, that are important because the dollars that we receive as a local government should be going to help people, not developers or politically connected cronies. So I just want to be clear that, you know, Elvis is, is, is helping us uh, turn around our urban renewal agency. He's assisting with our sewer infrastructure project. He's helping with our, our redevelopment of our water system. And, and there are so many basic things, basic infrastructure things that we're doing from working on you know, fixing the bridges that the MTA owns to identifying new job opportunities by bringing in companies like, you know, I said like Tesla to take a look at Mount Vernon to build out infrastructure for electric vehicles as well as hopefully advanced manufacturing. But without any further, I'd just like to, you know, ask Elvis to, to share um, some feedback about your experience of, of applying progressive policies in a place that really hasn't had any progressive policies in a pretty long time. Thank you very much, Mayor Thomas. It's a pleasure to be here on the show with you, and 
but I, I'm really flattered by the kind introduction. Um, excited to be here because uh, one of the things that really captured me was the challenge that you took on. Um, you, having grown up in Mount Vernon and having strong roots here, wanted to better your community, and all of us who get into public service uh, are really that's the impetus of what we want to do. We want to better our communities, and in your commitment to what you wanted to do with Mount Vernon, because I've known you over the years, and you've always come back to how you want to help your community and how you want to advance things, and taking everything that you've learned, whether it be from your mentors, whether it be from the, all the institutions that you studied at, and all of your work experience working for the New York State government, always focusing it back onto Mount Vernon and saying, how can I make my community better? And so that was a very moving vision. And so when asked to serve alongside you, to me, it, it was a really no-brainer to be able to help um, you, but as I've been here over the last couple of months, I've really grown to, to love the people of Mount Vernon, right? There are people with true heart, true grit, and, and people who want to move things forward. Fortunately, as you mentioned, the political willingness isn't always there to move forward. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge that we're always going to face. Um, and so your vision, to me, I, I captured it in three basic areas. You wanted to modernize the economy of Mount Vernon. You wanted to modernize City Hall and how public service is delivered to the people of Mount Vernon. And then ultimately, you wanted to transform Mount Vernon. Right? The vision that you have for Mount Vernon, I think it's, cap it's captured by when you say, you know, it's a diamond in the rough. Well, you know? let's hold that thought for right there. We're going to keep that diamond, you know, in full view. We're going to continue this conversation when we get back from break. Don't change that dial. You're listening to Mount Vernon moving forward. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You're listening to Mount Vernon moving forward. I'm Mayor Richard Thomas of the great city of Mount Vernon. We're here every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. You're listening to 1460 on your AM dial or worldwide at WVOX.com or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Mayor Richard Thomas. Uh, this is a pre-recorded show. Uh, we are going to be in attendance at Dave Ford's Wake this evening, and I just want to thank you all for not only listening, but uh, we've got to make sure we pay our respects and condolences to Dave Ford and his family. They made a tremendous contribution to making sure that progressive values are implemented across the board in health and in politics. And, and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm very lucky to be among one of his uh, mentees, his people that, that he was able to coach and guide. And I'm very um, saddened by his loss because I would always turn to him in, in the heat of the moment and just say, what would Dave Ford do? I would check in and, and you know, I was very pleased and, and privileged to present him with renaming the street after him because Dave Ford's way is the way we should be going. And I just know that, um, you know, the state of things are, are challenging, but, but I'm not gonna stop applying Dave Ford's wisdom and his, and his words to how you know, I try to move the city forward by listening to people, learning from people, and not being afraid to lead, keeping my door open to have conversations with anyone and everyone, and that's how it must be. As a leader, you have to convene people to come together of all different opinions and find common ground. And I'm not going to, you know, depart from my process of trying to send letters, send invitations, trying to get people to look at the issues, do the cost-benefit analysis, make it clear that fixing a field like Memorial Field is a good thing. It shouldn't take 10 years to fix it. And these are the things that, that you know, you're supposed to do. But, but there's always some extra drama and aggravation, and there are reasons for that. But whatever those are, you know, my focus has never been to point fingers or pass blame. It's always been about let's fix it and move on because we don't have much time. And, and part of that, that effort is you know, finding the right people to work with. And before we went to break, we were talking to Elvis. Elvis Cordova is a former uh, appointee of President Obama. He's working in our administration to help us uh, modernize local government, modernize our economy, and transform the city. And uh, one of the things that we're doing is we are digitizing the city without the Russians. So the good thing is we have people here that are helping us um, move the city forward. And, and Elvis was talking about uh, some of the principles that we have in mind to make sure that we get this done. And, and one of the things that I just want to say before um, we, 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 we start talking to Elvis again, there are, there are opportunities to fix Mount Vernon without um, going to the taxpayer. 
and part of our objective as local government is to receive funds from the federal government and deploy them to solve problems. And that's what Elvis has come in to do with the help of Sylvia Bolivar, who is um, also a former Obama appointee, a gentleman by the name of Don McCoy, who was a deputy assistant counsel, general counsel at HUD. Um, he's joined us, and Stacy Brayboy, who was uh, chief of staff within the Department of Agriculture and the Finance Department. So what I know is we have a, an amazing team, talented people that are helping us and, and while some people may not see them, but they're, they're behind the scenes doing the heavy lifting, making sure that our partners at the federal government understand that the reports that were never done are being done. And the things that happened in the past, like federal dollars being channeled to developers or politically connected cronies, is not happening. And just yesterday, um, we were proud to, to announce and share that $1 million in funds, federal funds were you know delivered to nonprofit organizations that are going to do the work that are going to help our community from rehabbing homes to providing down payment assistance to assisting those that need you know help making ends meet to serving veterans and these are things that are all good habitat for humanity westchester residential opportunities allied community enterprises these are all reputable organizations that have been around for years but for years, they've never got this amount of resources from Mount Vernon. And that's why, you know, I'm excited to finally be in a position to make a social impact that's deep and lasting. And we were able to use significant change to make significant change. So, uh, Elvis, um, I know that we, we've done a lot in a little bit of time, but can you just share with us, you know, some of um, you know your expectations and what you think is going to happen next as we move forward with fixing our sewers and, and making our streets and our parks more relevant to our community. Absolutely, and we've been in contact with, you know, many organizations that have expertise in this, such as the Trust for Public Land, as well as the Governor's Office and the Department of Environmental Conservation, because we want to make sure that we have the right partners at the table to do all this. So one of the things we've been focusing on is reaching out to them and explaining to them exactly where things are, our intent uh, of really transforming Memorial Field, the Canal Village, mm -hmm. and then the waterfront of Mount Vernon. You know, many cities that I can think of, San Antonio, I can think of Philadelphia, I can think of Brooklyn with the Kiwanis Canal, or even the West Side um, Highway, West Side Park in New York City, where these places were 10 years ago. And, you know, 20 years ago, and it seems like, you know, they were run down, they were neglected, and it took visionary leaders to come in and move the dial and start putting the right partners together to focus in on these. And now look at these areas and how they transformed. And I think that is where Mount Vernon is right now, and that's what we are doing. We are bringing in the right intelligent and capable people to help us plan this out, the right resources and technical assistance from the governor's office and all of the county and, and regional um, organizations that can really be our partners in helping us do this. So you'll have, you know, a new memorial field of that, I have no doubt. You'll have an incredible stadium there that will be a shining jewel again for Mount Vernon, but it'll be attached to this nice waterfront park, and it'll be connected by greenways that lead you to downtown. There's a there's a, a really transformative project that took place in Atlanta called the Beltline, mm -hmm. where they covered all railroad tracks. And I was recently there and seeing it where people bike, where, you know, they use bike share programs. They go walking during the weekends and all the little little plazas that are building up around it that are transforming neighborhoods. Uh, that's what I see Mount Vernon being capable of doing. But it's going to take a lot of hard work and it's going to take a lot of coordinated action. So we're, help, we're happy to be helping to help. We're happy to help people understand and our partners really grasp that vision. And that's going to be important because it's really going to transform Mount Vernon and it's going to attract, you know, other companies to come here because the quality of life will have improved so much. People who can't afford to live in the city of New York because it's so expensive will look at Mount Vernon and say, hey, mm -hmm. this is a place that's affordable. This is a place that really transformed itself. And, and that's dynamic. A lot of it going on here. I want to live here. I want to raise my family. Here. It's a lot of these young millennials that are looking for those opportunities. But aside from that, what we're also doing is we're looking at leading the way in clean energy. You had mentioned that we're in talks with companies such as Tesla to really make a statement and saying not only do we want to make the city greener, but we want to make the city cleaner. 
And, and that's going to be important because you're one of the few mayors that are really stepping up to the challenge when, you know, the United States pulled out of, you know, the Paris Accord. And we signed it. This, yes, exactly. This, this is good for the environment. And this is good for the overall economy. It's where we have to really be moving our city towards. And so, you know, you're looking at clean energy as another transformative way to modernize the economy, to bring small businesses into our and to create jobs and that's exactly where you know we want you to hang on to this show don't change that dial we're going to continue this conversation when we get back from break this is Mount Vernon moving forward welcome back welcome back welcome back you're listening to Mount Vernon moving forward I'm Mayor Richard Thomas of the great city of Mount Vernon you're listening to 1460 on your AM dial or worldwide at WVOX.com or on Facebook Live at Facebook.com slash Mayor Richard Thomas. The phone number is 914-665-2362. You can call us to leave a message at our office because um, this is a pre-recorded show. And we are I'm going to be attending Dave Ford's wake this evening, and I um, cannot miss that. Dave Ford is a local legend. He is someone that is responsible for making Mount Vernon into the political powerhouse it is, and he's someone that gave me my shot. He's the person that told me to always stand up for what you believe in, always listen to people, learn from people, and never be afraid to lead. Dave Ford made it clear to me that there's a lot of history I need to understand before you know I try to make any type of a difference. And he always said, you always want to sit down and talk to people, especially people that you do not agree with, because you have to go beyond your comfort zone to make sure that you make a better decision and you can reconcile your differences and move forward by healing the hurt. And Dave Ford did this at a time when racism was real. It was the law in the 60s and 70s. He, he helped create the Mount Vernon Neighborhood Health Center. They started out in trailers and then they moved into a building that the city provided. And again, today, I'm committed to making sure the health center gets ownership of that building. But it's going to take, you know, support from my colleagues in government to make it happen. I can assure you that there are so many things out there that Dave Ford has done from helping, um, you know, people just, just get their start to make a difference in their local communities. And, and I just want to make it clear that this is what I believe makes Mount Vernon so magnificent is that tight-knit community and, and, and having so many people be able to um, just be a part of such great things and, and being in position now as mayor, um, having listened to Dave Ford all this time and applying his, his suggestions, even as mayor, um, has, has really been helpful. Um, and, and you can see where I am. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very privileged, honored, and lucky to, to be mayor of Mount Vernon. And, and Dave Ford, you know, I hope to continue to do you right and make you proud of, of what we're doing to try and fix a broken system that 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 needs to, to serve our people better. And on the phone, we were talking with Elvis, Elvis Cordova, who's a former appointee of President Obama, who's joined our administration to help us fix the broken system. And we've been making significant progress over the past few months. But again, there's, you know, years of neglect that we have to address and we're not claiming anything that we're doing is perfect but we're making progress so um before we wrap up um, i just want to finalize with elvis and then you know go into the final um topics for the show elvis i just want to um ask you about the, the the steps that were taken to make sure that we renovate our city infrastructure from the sewers to community centers like the dole center or the armory knowing that we have resources that are available, be it from the federal government or monies that are just on the books that, that, that we are you know, sure is there, uh, still struggling with transparency and getting access to the books because you know obstruction, but we're gonna get through that. I just wanna you know, just hear some final thoughts from you as we move toward the weekend and, and get ready to, to promote the Mount Vernon Relief Drive on Sunday at 12 p.m. at City Hall Plaza for all those impacted by uh, extreme weather events. Um, you know, Elvis, you, we were just talking about jobs before we went to break. If you can just, you know, let's let's wrap up on on what we're doing, and so everybody can can hold us to it in the next few months to see how how far we've come since you know we were at this point in early October. Absolutely, and, and what'll be really important for us is to bring all our partners together. So some of the ideas we're having are having a small business summit uh, to be able to empower um, you know young. 
in startup companies. Um, we're definitely working with our academic institutions to have them really help us to map out, you know, where we can take advantage of tourism opportunities, where we can really enhance youth programs so that we're better preparing our youth for these new wave of jobs, whether they be clean energy, high tech, or advanced manufacturing, which we can bring here to Mount Vernon. We're looking to see how we can better capitalize off of that. And then we have, you know, a lot of uh, studies that have been done on Canal Village in the South 4th Cor Avenue Corridor study, which are looking mm -hmm. to really transform those areas. And so we're pulling all these pieces together, and it's going to be a lot of hard work. But I think all of us here, you know, are committed to that hard work because we know as, you know, in the Obama administration when we entered, you know, the economy was about to collapse. And it took us a lot of hard work to put it all back together and put it into a new direction. Uh, we're not scared to do the hard work, sure. but it's definitely, you know, it's 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 a labor of love. It, it takes a lot. We got to bring in all of the right partners and all of the people who want to participate um, to allow us to really synergize all of these actions so that we're coordinated and not disoriented as we do these actions. And so we're really excited about, you know, what's coming down the pike from Mount Vernon. Um, and and we're, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of starting to turn some things around here that had been neglected for so long. And thinking of new ways that we can better deliver public service to the public um, so that they can really benefit from it and that they can grow from it so that Mount Vernon can, you know, just begin shining like the diamond that it is. And that's and that's why I can't thank you enough for sharing your time, talent, and energy with us. Um, a lot to do in Mount Vernon, but um, I remember when Elvis first came in, he said, man, how'd you make it this far? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what were you doing? And, you know, it was very long nights and it's still very long nights. It's just, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're changing the culture of City Hall. And, you know, I thank Elvis uh, for, for helping us and recruiting a, uh, for a world-class team to join us. And um, as we get ready to round out the show, I just want to make sure everybody knows it's, it is a labor of love. As Elvis said, it's a labor of love. We have so many things that we're working on. And I just want to quickly, you know, focus on, you know, our public safety. Public safety is important. We all work hard. We all want our kids to have you know, a great experience. We want our families to be safe. Um, we want our loved ones to be able to get to and from transit nodes, you know, bus stops, train stations, you know, safely home. You don't need to have the threat of, you know, a dark uh, street or, or, you know, broken sidewalks to threaten the safety of anyone on any level, any, you know, age of the spectrum, young or elder. And, and we need to just have, have things at a place where our government works for you and, and it's almost obsolete because the problems are solved before you even know they're problems. And that's where I believe having our sequence down and, and, and having our operational strategy clear that, that everything that, that we're doing is designed to perform and designed to serve. And, and what I've done with the police department under extreme circumstances, very unusual circumstances, as I was told by the Journal News, um, you know, funding for our police commissioner was eliminated by um, Marcus Griffith in the last budget cycle. And, and this is something that, you know, I, I've challenged the news to revisit because I asked him, what other community has, you know, a search going on for a police commissioner and then they eliminate the funding for the police commissioner and they say come work for us. No, right now New Rochelle is searching for a police commissioner. The pay is $175,000 and that's great. That's going to attract top talent. Right now we have a national search going and, and we're, we're basically talking like you know the guy from Popeyes, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. That is not how we attract top talent. We need to make sure that the city council, especially Marcus Griffith, puts the money back in the budget and we need to put it at the same level as New Rochelle. We have more calls, we have more challenges as a community than New Rochelle. Numbers for numbers, pound for pound. There are more challenges because we're densely populated and, and you know what, we're doing our best to manage the numbers are holding in a place where Mount Vernon is getting safer, but we need supervisory leadership. Every week I sit down with the police to go over stuff, but guess what? I'm not going to stop um, sacrificing and going the extra distance to make sure our department is properly managed. 
But this is my point, everybody. For us to move forward, we need to make sure that we hold those accountable accountable. And I will always make sure that I stand up for what we believe in. I believe in safety. I believe in you having a great weekend. And I thank you all for listening. You've been listening to Mount Vernon moving forward. Have a great weekend.